Hey guys, it's Haley, and today I'm going to be sharing some very exciting news, as you can probably tell from the title. But before I jump into that, I just want to give you guys a student teaching update, just because in my last video that I talked about it in, which was um, my moving out of college vlog and like RIP senior year, very dramatic like coronavirus video, I was under the impression at that time that I was like done with student teaching, like wasn't required to go back, which I was going to go back anyway if schools reopened before the end of the semester or end of the year. If things were being figured out daily um, and new updates were coming out like by email like every 10 minutes, honestly, like there was just so many emails about student teaching and like what's happening and the requirements changing. As of now, when I upload this video or when I'm filming it, if schools reopen on May 4th as planned, we will go and finish out for the rest of the semester, which would be May 12th. Um, and we do have to fill out an hours log to keep track of all of our hours of things we're doing related to teaching or creating lessons or creating online learning stuff. All I know is I'm fine. I'm graduating as planned. I wrote letters to all of my kids in fourth grade. I shouldn't say all of them. I wrote letters to the 25 that were in my homeroom class and the other class that we had not as often but still every day. I wasn't able to write to them. I didn't have their addresses. And at that point, I would be buying 100 stamps instead of 50 because I had written all 25 of them a letter and then I gave them an envelope addressed to me with a stamp on it so they could easily just write me a letter back and send it to me. So that was 50 stamps, but I just miss all of them and I really hope they're all healthy and safe. I did get one letter back today, which is really exciting to start getting some letters back in. I'm hoping I'll get one from as many as possible. So that makes me feel a bit better because in my situation, in my district, it's not really guaranteed that every child has access to the internet or a computer. Um, for online learning. So my district hasn't started online learning officially yet. Since this all happened in March, like March 12th, we left. I haven't seen or talked to my kids at all. So I've just been feeling really sad about like literally having no communication with them whatsoever. Um, but now I obviously got their addresses. I was able to write them letters and now hopefully I'll be hearing back from them. I just have been missing my fourth graders and trying to reach out to them. And then I will help my supervising teacher with as much as I can um, when there's more concrete plan in the district. I made a Google Sites website for her. I don't know if we'll be able to use it because it's more complicated than I realize. Like you need to have a Google email to go onto it. And of course we could do Google Classroom. But I didn't like it because it wasn't very customizable, whereas the Google Sites, you can really just like design it, like move things around and put anything you need in it. I don't know. And obviously, like I said, the district hasn't decided anything, so I don't even know if they would let teachers use a Google Site or do their own thing. I'm not sure. So that's my student teaching update. And now for the point of this video, as you can tell by the title, I have accepted a teaching position for next year, which is 2020 to 2021 school year, um, as a fifth grade teacher. I'm obviously not going to say the district, but it is about 20 minutes away from where I live, which is perfect. And it's actually in a brand new school that was built in 2017. So it's super nice, and I'm really excited. I actually subbed there once last year during their field day which was interesting but I was like obsessed with the school because it's so nice everyone there was really friendly I'm very excited I know if you've watched my other like teaching related videos you know that like my dream grades were like one two three ish um, and now I'm a fifth grade teacher but I literally don't care I'm like so excited and I feel like being in fourth grade for student teaching really um, opened my eyes to like upper elementary because I would always think of them as like so like older and kind of scary but literally the more I was with my fourth graders they were like babies to me they're just so small so I'm excited for fifth grade I've been prepping so many just like random resources and like materials for my classroom it's literally only April so I have a lot of time to prepare but let me backtrack a little bit so um, I mentioned in my quarantine vlog about a week ago that I was interviewing with schools everything was obviously virtual because of coronavirus um, so I had one phone interview with one school in the same district but a different school um, and was told that I made it to the second round but they never ended up contacting me and then I interviewed with a second school which was the school I just got hired at 
and um, the first interview was a Google Duo interview and then the second one was a mock lesson with like some follow-up interview questions afterwards. I'm not sure if all districts do mock lessons, but I was already aware that this district did because I have a friend from BSU who was hired in this district and she had to do a mock lesson. Sorry if you can see Brendan walking around the background. So I kind of already expected to have to do a mock lesson, um, but it was pretty interesting because they just said like, prepare a lesson, like you can pick the topic, you can pick the standards. Um, and you have 10 minutes to demonstrate whatever part of your lesson you choose. Um, so I did a 5th grade standard because it was a 5th grade position. I did kind of like a ELA lesson on perspective tied into like some history aspects with Native Americans. I only had to present 10 minutes of it, but like I handed in my full lesson plan with like all my accommodate example accommodations and like my ELL strategies. I did not expect honestly to get a job this fast. Um, this sounds super corny, but I really do feel like I've been manifesting this for so long. I've been collecting stuff for my classroom since freshman year, and I don't want to get too deep into like interview tips in this video, so comment down below if you want a video all about um, teaching interviews and like how to prepare, what questions to expect to be asked, and leave me a comment with just any of your interview related questions, like your teaching job interview questions because I will read those off as I'm doing a video all about it because I had mentioned it in my last vlog and a lot of you were interested but I started thinking about it and I was like well I want to answer like specific questions that you guys have because I know like sometimes general videos they are helpful but you always have those lingering questions like I said, technically I only went on three interviews and they were all virtual which is kind of a weird circumstance because of coronavirus but I want to make a video all about it to try to help you guys out and just kind of document this phase of my life because I just think it's so crazy that I'm officially a fifth grade teacher come fall 2020. I'll give you a quick timeline of like how this all went down. My first interview with the school I got hired at was on March 23rd, a Monday, and it was a Google Duo interview and I think it was about 20 minutes and then they had emailed me the next day saying I made it to the second round and that we would do a mock lesson on Friday, March 27th. So that was one week, like a Monday and Friday. And then they had emailed saying they're going to make a decision by Thursday, which was April 2nd. And while I was out on a run with Brendan, because we've been doing an April running challenge, um, one of the girls I follow on Instagram, she's actually local in Massachusetts as well, um, her username is at Kyla underscore wellness. She started a running challenge, so I, I decided I wanted to try it, and I made Brendan do it with me. So we were running, and then I get the call, and at first it was private, which like, I kind of wondered if it was them, but I was like, eh, I'll just ignore it. And then I got another call that was like not private. And I answered it, and it was my principal, and he said my recommendations came back really good, and that they want to offer me the fifth grade position, and I was like in shock. I've been waiting to make this video until it was like more official even though like I was offered the position and I accepted it. Um, today I just sent them like all my paperwork and stuff so it feels a bit more official now. Oh, I forgot a really big part of this video. With all of that being said, I am going to change my YouTube name from just Haley DeMello to Haley Teaches. And I'm doing this for a few reasons. Um, I've always kind of had plans in the back of my mind to obviously make this channel like teaching focused. But of course I was still doing like my college related content so I just kept it my first and last name. But now being a teacher, it's not that my content is like inappropriate. Like if students or parents find my channel, it's totally fine. But I just feel like I'd rather have that line between like I don't know. So I just want to make my channel Haley Teaches instead of my first and last name just so it's not like you type in my name and like my YouTube pops up. And then another reason is I have a teacher Instagram which I've had for a while and the username on Instagram is at Haley Teaches. So I kind of want everything to be more cohesive because I feel like people watch me on here and they might even follow me on Instagram, but they have no idea that this is like the same person. <laughs> so yeah, so this way, naming my YouTube now, Haley Teaches, I feel like it's just more cohesive. Everything's the same on my Instagram and my YouTube. 
and now I can just dive right into all my teaching related videos and I'm super excited. I will link down below my Amazon classroom wish list. I know it's a super rough time right now. I don't really expect anyone to buy me anything, not even like my family members at this point, but I do want to list it down below for future reference and if you are a future teacher and you want to kind of see what I have on my wish list, I love looking at other teachers' wish lists and I've been making that wish list since 2018, I kid you not, so if you want to see my two years worth of work wish list, check it out. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.